Hello friends, welcome to another civil engineering interview question and this question is what are all those possible places where you will use initializer list. So I will be bringing around 5 to 6 possible cases where you have to use initializer list otherwise your code won't work. Okay, so these are the places where you have to use that and there could be other places also and if you know that please comment out. So first case is whenever you want to initialize a non-static constant data member of your class from outside like this okay then in that case you have to use this initializer list otherwise you cannot initialize this constant data member here okay so we will go ahead and compile this compile if we will run this it will run successfully i am not printing anything it's okay you can do that but let's suppose you are not using this initializer list you are going to initialize it in inside like underscore x is equal to x what generally we tend to do okay and remove this one also and underscore x is equal to zero okay so th this is how we generally do so if you will compile this code now there is this error you cannot assign the read only member like this okay so there is the only way to initialize that read only member okay and that's this initialize the list and I will just simply give a print method so that you can be sure about that. Yeah, this is the exact thing what you're looking here. So we can here give some b dot print and expect it to print that b and for b1 print and that's it. We'll go compile this, run this, see 10 and 12. So this is for 10 and this is 10. Okay. So First point is you cannot initialize non-static constant data member without initializer list. Okay, so this was the first point. Now we'll go for the second point. Now the second point is this. If you want to initialize some reference variable, there is some variable, say integer variable, and that variable is of reference type, then you cannot initialize it without using initializer list. I mean, you cannot do it like this. I will show you all the things don't worry so first we should have compiled it like that and see that whether it is working or not okay so i will just revert these changes so let's go and check whether it is compiling or not so we'll compile this it is compiling run 10 and 20 okay so the same thing is there i mean i have not changed the code much that's why it is giving the, as the previous output so 10 and 20 if i will remove this for your clarification x is equal to x this is not going to work let's compile this and check this is an error okay and yeah if you will do it like that then there is no error compile run 10 and 12 so the second point is you cannot initialize reference data member from outside of your class i mean obviously you will be initializing outside if you are not doing it from inside okay so that you cannot do without using this initializer list okay so let's look at the third point now so guys third point is you cannot initialize one class member i mean the data member inside another class if this class is not having default constructor here as you can see this is only a parameterized constructor we don't have any default constructor here okay and one is a class and we have taken this one as a data member here in this second class okay and this one is constructed here with this parameterized constructor i'm passing this that one object into this two so this two is taking it here and assigning that a which is of this one type from this x what i'm getting from here which is nothing but this one okay so this is the whole flow and I'm telling you if you will not assign this in this way it is not going to work so let's go ahead and compile this and check that I'm going to compile this it is going to compile will run it is running so that means there is no problem in this code so if I will remove this initialization like this one and I'll go for the traditional one like a is equal to x which I think you might be thinking would work but it's not going to work we'll compile this and there are some error no matching function for call to one and one why because there is no default constructor here and why we need default constructor to be present why because 
you need to create this a here then only you are going to assign this a with this x okay don't ask me question like why you wanted that so listen carefully whenever you are calling it like this so 2 will call its parameterized constructor this one because you are passing this one okay and one is of this one type so you are getting this constructor called now this one will get copied here so the copy constructor will be called and if you have not given that there is no problem compiler will give you that okay but see here if you have created this one now you want to assign this one into this one so in order to assign this into this this a should be created and you know if you are writing this one and a this means you are going to call a default constructor here you are not passing any value here like we are passing this 10 here when you are creating this one variable you are not passing anything here it means you are going to call default constructor not the parameterized constructor that's why it is telling you that one i mean this one which is nothing but a default constructor does not exist okay so if i'll make one it will work see we'll compile this it is going to compile okay we'll run no problem but if in case you don't have this it is not going to work and you must have to initialize it using your initializer list okay so we'll just simply fast do this run got it let's look at the fourth point so this is your fourth point and the fourth point is you cannot initialize your base class data member from child class without using this initializer list okay this is base class you have inherited this into the child class and there is this underscore x underscore y is of child underscore x is of base i mean inside base you want to initialize this one into this x which is nothing but this x and you want to initialize this 2 which is going to into this one okay so in that situation you have to have this initializer list this is nothing but your parameterized call to your base parameterized constructor okay it is it has nothing to do with this one okay this i'm using to initialize this because we uh, generally we should use initializer list to initialize our data members but it has this base call which is our main intention here okay so shall i show you that yeah i should show that well i can do that underscore x is equal to x and uh, underscore y is equal to y okay this is not going to work we'll compile this there is this error integer x is a private within this context so it is a private variable here okay you cannot do that so the only option left is using initializer list so this is the initializer list and if we will compile this this is going to compile if we will run this we will run there is no output so nothing will come so this is fourth point so let's go for the fifth point so this is your fifth point fifth point is when you have your temporary variable exact similar to the data member like underscore x and underscore x if you remember previously i was doing it like this without underscore here and without underscore here that means you are going to assign this x into underscore x which is your data member okay but what in case of this one if both variable name are same then you have to use this initializer list only to make this happen okay i mean the initialization happen if you will not do that let's go ahead and compile this this is going to work no problem if let's suppose you are not using this one and you are going to initialize it like underscore x then there is an error it doesn't know which x is what like this x is also underscore x this is also underscore x underscore x both are underscore x so are you initializing this one to this one or this one to this one i mean you got it right so there is a confusion but if you will write in initializer list there is no confusion so we'll compile this one oh sorry uh we have to use it something like void print so that you can see it is really disturbing underscore x e n d l done 
so now if i will print this b dot print it will show you that it is not having this one as a value here okay you might have thought that okay this one will go i mean this whatever this one you are passing it will go into this one but no it is not working that way okay you can see that if i will just simply change this one to the initializer list just for your surety underscore x underscore x then this is going to work we'll compile this and run this one okay got it so this was point number five you cannot initialize your data member which is of same name what your temporary variable is holding okay so let's go for the last point and that is really very big point so this is your last point actually the last point is whenever you use initializer list to initialize the data you optimize your code a little bit okay and we'll see what is that optimization so i will just go ahead and run this code first i clean this so we'll compile this it is working and we'll run this so now remember parameterized constructor was called i mean base parameter base copy constructor base default base assignment operator and my class parameter so this i can just explain you like this like base b10 is getting created this one so this is a fair call to the base parameter constructor so this first one is base parameter constructor second one is you are copying this b here i mean from here you are passing so this b is getting copied into this b okay so that's why this base copy constructor is called here because of this b2 this b copy okay so that base comp copy constructor is called after that you are creating this underscore b here so there is no parameter so that's why this base default constructor is called so this base default is called okay now after that base assignment operator is called because now you have reached here you are going to assign this b which is this b into this underscore b which is your data member okay so this assignment is happening just because of this initialization okay so after that once you are done i'm just printing my class parameter so this my class parameter is called okay so we can see one two three four five five functions were called okay let's suppose you are doing it with initializer list like this one not with this assignment then what will happen the same code nothing is changed you saw that if you will just assign that using this initializer list then what will happen i will compile this code and i will run this so you can count this one two three four only four constructors were called but in previous code there was five construction call so we'll go through line by line so because of this one this base parameter constructor is called so there is no optimization in here this is getting called with no optimization now this b is assigned into this b so that's why this base copy constructor is called okay this b is going into this b and this base constructor i mean copy constructor is just because this b is now going into this underscore b you are not creating this underscore b using this default base call the only thing which is saved is this base default don't think like base assignment is also gone no base assignment is there actually this is nothing but your base copy constructor call but what you saved yourself is this base default this is not going to call okay because this is in place construction so this base copy constructor is called and at last my parameter was printed okay so that's why as you can see one two three four four functions were only called in this case when you are using this pair uh, this initializer list and five were called when you was not using that okay so that's how it is good for optimization purposes also okay so i think i'm done here if you have any doubt or some concern about anything whatever i explained here you can comment out i'll be very happy to answer that okay i'll see you in the next video bye bye